Okay, hello everyone. I'm Bilal Bashir and today we'll be discussing about production possibility curves. So what is a production possibility curve also known as PPC? <clears throat> Basically, PPC shows the combination of goods and services that can be produced for the given resources. So for example, if I had, let's say 10 hours and I were to produce a shirt it would take me two hours. So in total, I could have produced five shirts. Or let's say if I were to produce a marker and every marker needs one hour to produce, I would be able to produce 10 markers. Now, in a particular day, I can produce either five t-shirts or 10 markers or a mixture of both, a combination of both, right? So for example, I could have produced two t-shirts and six markers. So what a production possibility curve actually shows is all the combinations that can be produced with a given resources. So I could produce five t-shirts that is shown in the PPC. I could produce 10 markers that is shown on the PPC. So this is a PPC. It's a straight line and let's say shirts. So at most, five shirts and zero markers, 10 markers and zero shirts. I can produce any combination of goods on this PPC curve. So basically a PPC curve is showing me the combination of goods that can be produced with the given resources. Now this PPC is a straight line. This means that on this PPC, the opportunity cost is constant. So if it's five shirt and 10 markers, what this basically means is one shirt is equal to two markers. And it would be same for all the points on the PPC. So if the opportunity cost is constant, we would say that the PPC is a straight line. Now, what is an opportunity cost? So this is just basically a revision class. So I'm sure you are aware of these concepts, these introductory concepts, and I don't have to spend a lot of time on that. Opportunity cost is basically the next best alternate for gone. So for example, if I am teaching over here, I cannot watch TV. So the entertainment from TV is lost because I'm teaching right now. That is my opportunity cost. Okay, so what would happen if the opportunity cost was increasing? The shape of the PPC would have changed. And now you can see this PPC is concave. Concave means it is bored outwards to the origin. As I like to call it in Urdu, police wale ka pet, right? So the opportunity cost in this case is increasing. And this is a more practical approach of life. Every resource that we have is a specialized person in a particular thing. So for example, taking uh, labor as an example, a labor, I myself am skilled at teaching economics. So if I switch from teaching economics to any other subject, would that be possible? Yes, with a bit of research, I can teach that subject. But as a result, I would lose out on many students because they would not want to study let's say business studies from me but i would gain some students so the things that the students that i would be sacrificing are far greater than what i am entertaining now therefore the opportunity cost is increasing reason the reason is simple the opportunity cost is increasing because every resource is skilled and specialized at a particular thing so if we deviate that specialized resource to something that it is not specialized at, what would happen? We would start producing less and sacrificing more, hence the concave. Now, you're watching this lecture and you're watching as if I'm entertaining. So it's not an entertainment. And most probably after, let's say 10 minutes, you might get bored. The only way to watch this lecture is to make the notes. If you're making notes, 
you will find the lecture to be more interesting. You can pause the video at any time and you can write, make your graphs whenever it's convenient for you. But make the notes. Only watching it, you cannot watch it for long, longer than 10 minutes. All right. So let's move on. We have a third PPC, third shape of PPC. This is basically convex to the origin. What do you mean by convex to the origin? It is bored inwards towards the origin. And this means that your opportunity cost is decreasing as you move down the curve. And this is not practical. So in your papers, you can either make a straight line or you can make a concave curve, right? If you want, you can just pause the video and copy it. Okay. Moving on to the next concept. Now PPC is tested quite often and you would have a lot to learn on this to, you know, gather those skills to get a good mark on this uh, topic. So we'll explore them side by side. The first concept is resource reallocation. And now reallocation basically means when we shift our resource from producing one thing to another thing, right? So let's say my factory produces Pepsi and it produces 7up. Now my PPC is concave to the origin, which means it has an increasing opportunity cost. And let's say I made a point, point X. Because this is on the PPC, what does this mean? That it's full employment. I'm producing 10 Pepsis and let's say I'm producing 15 seven ups. Now, what happens is the question states that we are allocating more resources towards Pepsi. So in essence, what is happening? We are asking our labor to not to produce seven up, but to produce Pepsi. We're asking our land to produce Pepsi. We are asking our capital man-made resources to produce Pepsi. So as a result, what would happen? Some of the resources that were actually producing 7-Up would decrease and we would end up producing more Pepsi. So this would be shown as a movement on the PPC. So now we are producing 10 7-Ups and let's say we are producing 12 Pepsis. The movement from X to Y. So whenever there is a reallocation of resources, there will always be a movement along the PPC. Whenever there is a movement along the PPC, this would always create an opportunity cost. So the opportunity cost of producing two extra Pepsis is five seven ups. So we had to forego sacrifice five units of seven up in order to be able to produce two units of Pepsi. Now, this is usually asked and the way you can memorize it by reallocation and the question has reallocation in it. So it basically hints you that you need to make a graph that shows a movement. The other concept in PPC is unemployment. So let's look at the concept of unemployment and scarcity. Let's make another PPC. <clears throat> AA, let's say I'm producing consumer goods and capital goods. <clears throat> Initially, I am at point X. I'm making five capital goods, eight consumer goods. So what basic, basically means is I am at full employment level because I am producing on the PPC. Now, if there is unemployment, in this case, unemployment does not only refer to labor, but all the factors of production. So if the question is stating that there is unemployment, it could mean that we have land, but we are not using it. It could mean that we have labor, but we are not using it. It could mean we have capital, but we are not using it. And it could mean we have entrepreneurs that are not doing the businesses. So if there is unemployment, it can be shown as a point inside the PPC. Now, this basically shows that we are now able to produce less consumer and less capital goods. But the capacity AA 
which is our PPC, has not decreased. So at any point of time in the future, if we want to produce more, we can simply employ more resources that are currently unemployed. And if we want to show scarcity, we would show it at a point outside the PPC. Now this combination is not producible. Why is this not producible? Because we do not have enough resources. Not having enough resources is scarcity. Unlimited needs and wants, limited resources. So we want to produce at this point, but we do not have enough resources. So this is unemployment and scarcities graph. And this is a graph for reallocation. So if you want, you can pause the video and copy it. <clears throat> okay, the next concept is a shift in a PPC. Now we have a PPC that is labeled as AA. We're producing consumer goods and capital goods. Now, our PPC can either shift inwards or it could shift outwards. So let's say if it shifts outward, this means that now I have a capacity to produce more. So I like to tell my students that we would always write when the PPC shifts outward, the productive capacity increases. And... When it shifts inward, we would say the productive capacity has decreased. Now the question arises, why would the productive capacity increase or decrease? All right. Why would the productive capacity increase or decrease? So a shift depends on the quality and quantity of resources. So resources means factors of production, land, labor, capital, and entrepreneur. So whenever the quality or quantity of any one of these change, the PPC would shift outwards. Now, there is a confusion between students regarding unemployment and a shift inwards. So let's clarify. But before we clarify, let's look at some reasons why a PPC would shift. So this is basically one reason. But we can drive 20 reasons out of this one reason. For example, if we were to use new technologies on natural resources, which are land, what would happen? We would be able to produce more. So if I start giving injections to a cow, it would start, let's say, producing more milk. So my productive capacity has increased, right? So this would be shown as a shift outward. Similarly, if there is a discovery of new resources, let's say we uh, find a new resource, a new crude oil site, which was not there earlier, but we just discovered it. Our economies productive capacity would surely increase. Labor, if we were to have immigration of labor, I immigration. So what would happen? People would come in the economy, we would have more labor to produce, the productive pos uh, production possibility curve would shift outwards. However, if it was an immigration, E immigration, people are exiting the economy, this means we have less labor, our productive capacity would decrease. Now, in this case, the productive capacity is not decreasing. We do have resources, but we are not using them. In this case, we do not have resources. This is the maximum that we can produce, right? So, for example, if I have a class of 30 students and I have 30 chairs, 
the maximum, the full employment level would be, I could teach 30 students. So if there are 30 students in my class, this means that I am operating at full employment. Now it can be a combination of girls, let's say 10 girls and 20 boys or 20 girls or 10 boys. So combination does not matter. I am employing my resources at the fullest. What would happen if five of the students were to leave? I would say I could still teach 30 students, but because I do not have five students, the demand is less. So my capital cheer are not being fully used. This would be shown as an unemployment. On the contrary, if 10 of the chairs were destroyed, let's say a flood came in and 10 chairs were destroyed. Now I could only teach 20 students. So my productive capacity from 30 now dropped down to 20. Okay. So capital, we could simply import more capital. We could simply, let's say, produce more capital to increase the quantity of capital. And we could simply uh, do better research and development to improve the quality of capital. Right. So there are a mixture of combination. If you're unsure of the uh, reasons, you can open up your book always and you can read the points from there on. Right. Moving on. Shift, unemployment and reallocation of resources. Now, <clears throat> there is a very interesting question which usually comes up. It's regarding capital goods. Now, the question comes up as a country decides to allocate more resources towards capital goods. What would be the impact on the short term and the long run? Now, if you understand this question, what it is initially asking is that we are allocating more resources and producing capital goods. So if you're producing more capital goods, we would be producing less consumer goods. So this would be shown by a movement and there would be an opportunity cost. So in the short run, people would have less consumer goods, but would have more capital goods. So in the long run, the quantity of capital goods have increased. So in the future, we are at AA, we would shift to BB outwards. So the productive capacity would increase. This concept is also explained by the term less jams today for more jams tomorrow. So we are sacrificing jams, consumer goods today in order to produce more capital goods today. And in the future, we will have more machines so we can produce more capital goods. The last concept on a PPC is a pivotal shift. A pivotal shift, let's say capital goods and consumer goods. A pivotal shift is when the PPC pivots. So it's basically fixed on one axis and then pivots on the other axis. So let's say a question is, um, we have in our country new machines to produce consumer goods at a faster rate. So the capital goods production would remain the same, but the consumer goods production would increase. So from AA to AB. Now, a pivotal shift can be inwards. A pivotal can, shift can happen on this axis. So it's always acceptable. Now, the important concept is what would happen to the opportunity cost of consumer goods. All right. Oh. <clears throat> For this, we'll take up some value. So let's keep it pretty simple. 10 and 10. So initially, for 10 consumer goods, if I wanted to make 10 consumer goods, I had to sacrifice 10 capital goods, right? So that was the opportunity cost. Or we can say that for 10 capital goods, we can produce 10 consumer goods. Now, when we shift it to B, it's now 12. So it has to be more than 10, right? So now for 10 capital goods, we can produce 12 consumer goods. This means that the opportunity cost for consumer goods has actually decreased. So for 10, we were producing 10 earlier. For 10, we are producing 12. So it's 
it can be said that we need to sacrifice less capital goods to produce more consumer goods right and if you have any issues on this you can simply calculate it so <clears throat> let's say um, the opportunity cost for consumer goods initially when we were at aa was 10 capital goods for 10 consumer goods we had one so one was the opportunity cost one capital good was the opportunity cost for a consumer good what this basically means is for every one consumer good the opportunity cost is one capital good now when we shifted to ab or when we pivoted to ab we are still producing 10 capital goods or we can produce 12 consumer goods so the answer would be let me just calculate it should be around 0.86 let's check this 0.83 so now what it means for every one consumer goods we need to sacrifice 0.83 capital goods so whenever there's a pivotal shift outwards for whatever good it is their opportunity cost would decrease had it been a pivotal shift inwards the opportunity cost of consumer goods would have increased right so these are the four main concepts that you need to know in a ppc allocation of resources along with opportunity cost unemployment and scarcity shift inwards and outwards and a pivotal shift along with the concept of opportunity cost I hope this uh, video was helpful. Thank you.